<laughs> oh fuck! Oh my god, guys! I'm back! <laughs> Welcome to the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast, everyone! Episode 189? <laughs> Excuse me. Did you say 189? I did. I did. Where you where have you been? Where have I been? Well, I've been slacking, that's why. I'm in a new place, as you can see. I moved into this place about one year ago. And exactly about one year ago, I stopped recording the podcast. Now why, you might ask. Why would I stop recording the podcast? It's not because I didn't want to. I wanted to this whole fucking year. I really did. But I just kept making excuses, I kept procrastinating, I kept putting it off. The reason why I moved to this place that I'm at now, in a new town, is because I got... uh, I moved up in the world. In the workplace establishment that I currently reside at. So my focus was on that. And in between the moving process, between moving from where I was to where I am right now, I was living with my parentals. Two parents. I have, I have two parents. Some of you may find that hard to believe, but it's true. I've got two of them, a mother and a father. <laughs> Who would have thunk? But I was living with them in the process, in the, in the, in the uh, buffer period of waiting to move from one town to the next. And during that time, I said to myself, I'm not going to film my podcast while I'm at my parents' house. There's no room I can go into where they're not going to hear me. And there's no time throughout the day where they're both not home. So I was like, fuck it. This is like high school all over again. Making videos in my room alone like a fucking Maroon 5 victim. So, you know, I just didn't want that lingering over my head you know just thinking about my parents listening to me listening to their 20 fucking six year old kid in, in in his room in the basement of their house making weird fucking fart noises into a microphone nah so i'm like i'll just wait till i get to my new place which is this place and then i'll fucking fire it up right again okay but that buffer period between moving from one town to the next where I was at their house will turn went from maybe being about a month to about three four months so I was living with my parents for about four months and I really lost all my momentum every last fucking ounce of momentum that I had with this podcast I fucking flushed it down the goddamn drain there wasn't an ounce of momentum left in so when I actually got settled into this place I said to myself, okay, we got to fucking fire it up. Let's go. And I was motivated. I was as motivated then as I was with the first episode. For those who don't know, when I started this endeavor, I said to myself, this is it. This is what's going to make me big. This is what, this is who I am. This is what I love. And it is all true. And I said to myself at that time, you have to consistently do this and you have to persistently do this and you cannot stop. Do not miss a week. Do not. And I didn't. I didn't. I went strong for a good solid two years. I was even getting guests. Bomb, bomb, bomb. I had fucking Shoe Nice. I had fucking Alex Two Tone. I had, uh, uh, what's his name? The Raccoon Boy with the squirrel. <laughs> raccoon, t- what the fuck's his name? Nate is lame. I had Rose Mulay. I had the fucking guy from. Your mom's house, who was featured on there, the, this guy. Those freaking knees. Kyle G turned into, you know, a whole thing where he actually ended up hating me and never talking to me again. You know, that was beautiful momentum. And I fucking dropped the ball. And I hate that I did that. But no regrets. There's no point in regretting. All right. I took a year off. But we're back in full fucking swing now, baby. All right? It's, there was a lot of excuses, a lot of bullshit, a lot of stuff that I 
just needed to throw away and stop caring about. Because guess what? I've got it figured out now. And look at this set, dude. Is this not nice? We've got a red wall. We've got a Bob Marley picture that fits nice with the red wall. You know, it's a nice little contrast. We still got the mushrooms. I'm never going to get rid of the mushrooms. My uniform, I can't get rid of my uniform. Are you fucking kidding me? Even though it clashes with the red wall. Guess what? I don't give a fuck what you think. Okay? I don't give a goddamn. And I've got two computers here on the go. No more lag. Because I've got fiber optic. And I've got two computers. What? And look at this desk. This is beautiful. Big desk. The camera doesn't do it justice, but this justice, but this desk is fucking huge. All right, I'm in my living room. This place that I live in is not very big as it is, but this is my living room, and it takes up the majority of my living room. And guess what? I don't give a fuck. I also don't give a fuck about that. Uh, 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 and you shouldn't either. But guess what? I do give a fuck about today's card. Here's today's card. It's tradition around here to show you the card, but it's not tradition to show you what's on the card, but you'll find out anyway because we'll talk about it. But boom I still got it. I didn't even have to rewatch an old video to remember that fucking stupid line that I have. It's just ingrained in my fucking brain, like GTA San Andreas cheat codes. Alright, I still know the health cheat. B right, B right, left X, Y up, down A, right, left, right out, right down, up Y. I'll never forget those. I'll be on my deathbed when I'm fucking 99 years old because that's when I want to live till. I don't want to live any longer than that. 99's the cutoff. Bop. So when I'm 99 living on my fucking deathbed, should I stop fucking? Should I stop saying the word fuck? No. I like it. It's a good word. It's a good word. When I'm 99 on my deathbed and someone comes into my room and they're like, hey, uh, we were watching old episodes of the podcast and... You had mentioned that you will forever memorize the GTA San Andreas cheat codes. And you I know that you have Alzheimer's and hardcore dementia. But can you still recite them? And, I'll, and I won't be able to remember a goddamn thing, but I will remember those cheat codes. I shit you not, I will remember those cheat codes for as long as I fucking live. I'm telling you, dude, if I still remember them from this point, like how am I going to forget them? The last time I actually physically used those cheat codes, I was what, maybe 12 years old? And I still remember, I haven't used them since then. It's like a song, you know? You never forget the lyrics of your favorite song. Just like I'll never forget the, the button combinations of my favorite cheat codes from GTA San Andreas. No, this is not marijuana. This is not cannabis. Don't ban me from YouTube, YouTube. I'm sick of YouTube banning people, too. Like, what the hell? YouTube's been my first love for as long as forever. Carol fucking basket. I gotta get rid of these buttons, man. Coronavirus! They're too old. Coronavirus? Like, ugh. Fuck, don't even talk about corona. I'm sick of it. Okay? We're done with that shit. That's long gone. It's not, a fu it's not funny. It's not a meme anymore. Get it out of here. I need new buttons. But what were we talking about? YouTube banning people, okay? Stop it. I mean, what am, what, what, am I, am I going to change anything? No, but I don't agree. I don't, I just don't ban people, man. Like, who gives a fuck what they're going to say? All right? I just found out Sneeko's banned from goddamn YouTube. Like, what? Like, I, I, and you're, you could say, you're, you're watching this right now, and you're like, oh, Sneeko, that guy's a fucking idiot and a dumbass and a prick and all this other stuff like you like all you say about Andrew Tate as well you you people just want someone to hate okay just just actually listen to Andrew Tate of what he what he has to say all right i don't agree with everything that he says but the majority of what he's saying he's saying it in a in a comedic manner all right he uses ex highly ex high exaggeration to express his points you know he's not being completely serious with the things he says. He's being facetious. Is that the right word? I don't know. Do I look like a dictionary? Um. Ah. 
I missed that button. Um, oh, I missed that button. Um, mm. <laughs> You're disgusting. God, I missed those. You guys got <laughs> any bags of bird ham in here? <laughs> we ran out of bird ham. Wow. Bee boo boo bop boo boo beep. Bee boo boo bop bee boop. What is this one? Oh, it's not available. Yeah, I need to update these buttons. I need to update the look of my channel, the description. There's a lot of stuff I have to do. This is my first, other than setting all this shit up and getting it working properly, which was a goddamn hassle. And that's one of the excuses I use to not do it because I'm like, ah, I'll do it tomorrow. I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I work the next three days at night, so fuck, I'll wait till next week. Oh, I'll wait till tomorrow. Do you see what happens when you procrastinate? <clears throat> Oliver, what are you doing? Oliver's still here. You remember Ubel? Oliver, come up on your table. Come here. Come here, Oliver. Come here. Come on, Oliver. Jump up. Come here. Oh, he hit his head. Oh my god, he smacked his fucking noggin. Did you hear that? Oh my god, is your head okay? Oh my god, Ubo. You smacked your fucking head right on the table. That looked like it hurt. Oh, he's sneezing on me. Oh, get out of here. Holy shnikes. <laughs> uh. What? Yeah, I know. I know. You really think I would sit here and drink out of some random fucking drinking vessel? Huh? I know what you're thinking. Where's the mug? Where's the goddamn mug? You thought I forgot, didn't you? You thought I fucking forgot. I don't forget about traditions. All right? Bada boom, bada bing. The white sneakers mug makes a return. <laughs> oh, fuck me, man. I got you good. I got you. Hold on. I don't like I don't like pouring water next to electronics. This this is not designed for this. So let me just Oh my god, this is scary. I didn't spill a drop. Oh beautiful. There is some drops here, but that's from the straw. Let me just... Oh, I have a napkin in my butt pocket. I keep a napkin in my butt pocket for for circumstances like this. Let me grab it. It's not in this pocket. Oh, found it. I found it. Oh, I got a story about napkins in your butt pocket. <sighs> kind of. It's not, it's not a great story, but I'll tell it anyway. Uh, so I was once at a funeral as most people are and uh you know funerals are they're not fun i've never been to a fun funeral even though the word fun is in the name i was actually thinking about oh fuck i was thinking about starting uh a a, a, uh, a uh, what do you call it like a stand-up comedy place like the Laugh Factory or the Comedy Store, but I wanted to create. What are they called? I can't. I can't think of it. Clubs, comedy clubs. That's the word. I wanted to start a comedy club called the Funeral Home, <laughs> where where comedians come to kill or be killed. All right, because you know it's a it's a common expression in the in the comedian world when you do an awesome set. They say, "I killed it. I fucking killed that set." But then people who bomb. You know, they say they bomb, but the opposite of killing the audience is being killed by the audience. So I want to create a comedy club called The Funeral Home. And then the tagline is, where comedians come to kill or be killed. Wouldn't that be cool? Because it's also funny. And then we could also say we put the fun in funeral. Wouldn't that be fucking... That is such a good idea. Please, don't take that. Well, you can take it. I'm never going to actually pursue that, but... I think that's fucking brilliant. Anyway, we were talking about napkins in your butt pocket. Can you guys see this? Also, I got this bad boy up and where I'm running again. All he needed was a proper cord. I had the wrong cord. 
Sorry, I've got phlegm in my throat. It wasn't that I had the improper cord. I had the right cord, but it was broken. Like the piece that actually connects in here, the male piece that goes into the vagine, the female piece, was like bent back and... Uh, do you really care? No. Anyway, back to what I was talking about. I was at a funeral. I'm not going to say who it was because it doesn't matter. But I was at a funeral and I was like, this was a person who was close to me. So I'm like, okay, I better bring some Kleenex. Some, But all I had was paper towel. So I'm like, I'm going to put this paper towel in my butt pocket. In case if I ever need to whip it out at any point in time. I, I don't want, I don't like crying in public. And I get it's okay to cry in public at a funeral. But I just didn't want to go and find Kleenex somewhere while there's tears dripping down my face. I just wanted to, you know, wipe those tears right away immediately. Why? Because I'm a fucking... Uh, I don't know the term. <laughs> I'm a man who has suppressed his emotions since the day he was born. And I will continue to do so. And you can't fucking change the way I think about that. I won't cry. I won't even cry at a funeral. And you can't make me. So that's why I brought paper towel in my butt pocket. In case if a, a tear or two does dribble down my face, I can fucking get rid of it immediately. So I put this napkin, this paper towel, in my butt pocket. And throughout the whole funeral, I didn't cry once. So naturally, you just forget about this paper towel, right? Uh, so where was I going with this? Oh, yeah. Where was I going with this? Fuck me. Don't tell the story if you're going to forget where you're going with this. Well, here's what I'll say. Before the funeral had started, I got my crying out. I hid somewhere and I cried and I let it all out. And when I got to the funeral, I didn't have to cry. I also didn't look at the at the person inside the open casket. Everyone was going up and they're like some people were like kissing this person and touching their hand and it's it's like what are you doing? This is fucking weird, is it not? I mean, I get it. It's a family member. You want to see them one last time. You want to, t but it's like, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to kiss a dead body. I don't want to touch their hand. I mean, I literally saw people like grabbing their hand and like coming in and it's like, Fuh. Ugh. what are you doing? Stop it. <laughs> So anyway, I put these, I had these, I kept, I kept the paper towel in these pants. Funeral was over. We did everything. You know, it's at the point of the day now where I'm at home and I get to take these clothes off and wash them. I wash them and something happens about a few months later. And by something, I mean another funeral. So we're at the funeral home. But we're outside because we're not, it's not ready for us to go inside yet. So we're just, we're hanging outside. Some people are having some cigarettes, some vapes, you know. And then the person, one of the people that was in, you know, our group of people standing there started to like bawl her eyes out and, and really tear up and cry like a maniac, which is, you know, like if completely acceptable and understandable. And I don't mean the term maniac in any derogatory term. It was just like, you know, one of those cries that's like really obnoxiously out there. Which is fine. I'm not, there's nothing wrong with that. Cry at a funeral. You're supposed to. That's what it's there for. All right? Just because I don't cry at a funeral doesn't mean you can't cry at a funeral. That's not, that. you know, that's whatever. I just like to use words. Okay? So she was obnoxiously crying, which is fine, again. And there was a situation where she wasn't allowed inside the building because it wasn't ready yet. There was no napkins outside, and she, she's like, she was messy, wet, snotty. So she's like, everyone's like, does anyone have a napkin? Does anyone? And like people are looking in their purse. People are going, the, the other people she was with was going in their cars. 
and I'm like, uh, I'm kind of standing there awkwardly because everyone else is kind of looking for napkins or Kleenex or something, and I didn't really everyone else was doing it so i was like i don't need to participate in finding a napkin someone will find one right but then i'm like a brain blast happens it's like ba-ding! i'm like oh my god i've got one in my butt pocket so i'm like i'm reaching in i'm reaching i'm not saying anything i'm reaching in and i'm like oh my god it's still here but this is what it looks like this it looks it's not used but it certainly fucking looks like it was so i'm like uh okay and i'm like I've got, uh, here you go. And I, <laughs> and I give her this fucking crinkled up piece of napkin. And she goes, oh, no, that's okay. She's like, no, 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 no. Because, like, she's, I could tell she's grossed out by the napkin. And I didn't think about it at the time. I'm like, I, maybe I should have unfolded it a bit. And, but she was like, no, 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 that's okay. And, and she didn't accept my napkin. Because it looked like it was a snot rag that, <laughs> that had been used. So then someone else comes and gives her a proper napkin, one that doesn't look all disheveled and wrinkled. And she blows her nose and wipes her tears and all that. And then I don't hear from her the rest of the night. She ignores me because uh, she was offended that I gave her a snot rag at a funeral. But I didn't. Told you it wasn't a great story, but that's just the first thing that popped in my head. And again, I just... Actually, I just need to established right now this is a this is going to be a rusty episode if you haven't already figured that out this is going to be a bit rusty because it's my first episode back in over a year (laughs) yay clap your hands everybody clap i shouldn't clap next to the mic actually it's a rookie move Uh, a lot of people hate slurping, and I typically do too, and I always have. Nope. Wrong. I did not always hate the slurping. I was a slurpy boy. And I think everyone's a slurpy boy. Or girl. Because there is only two genders. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I would... I remember I there's this one instance I remember as a kid I would slurp specifically soup hot soup I would slurp it okay and my grandmother would get fucking furious with me she would get maniacally mad okay I'd slurp she'd go hey stop it stop slurping like that like she would get fucking mad and I'd be like Okay, okay, I didn't, I didn't know. Like to me, it didn't make sense. I was like, I, 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 it's just how I eat. I don't know. This is how I do it. And so I, I'd catch myself slurping in public and I'd be like, oh fuck, I, I can't slurp because it triggered me because I was, I would constantly be thinking people are going to scream at my face and tell me to stop. Stop slurping! Like, she would get so mad, it would piss her off that much. She was a bit of a maniac, as is, anyway, but... Um, my mother's friend, who had a child who was my best friend, whenever I would go over there, I would sometimes slurp, and he would sometimes slurp, and she would do the same thing. She would get maniacally mad. Not as mad as my grandmother, but she would get mad. She'd be like, hey, hey, stop slurping. Stop it. It's disgusting. And I'm like, is that what it is? It's disgusting? I don't think so. But then I started thinking, I'm like, maybe it is. Because then when I would hear other people slurping, I'd be like, oh, I get it. I don't like it when you do that. Stop it. But now, over the past few years, I would... (sighs) Sorry, a lot of people hate when I burp. I notice that now, especially when I'm with certain friends in public they fucking hate when i burp and the people i watch they help burp like dynamic banter my favorite podcast of all time nothing but burps and farts on that show and that's why i love it but anyway back to the soup so nowadays i slurp soup because i don't slurp in public because i know how much people hate it but i wish i wish it would become more acceptable and here's why well there's really only one reason why and it's because the soup is fucking hot 
If you're drinking hot soup, hot hot chocolate, hot coffee, hot tea, slurping is okay. Okay? Watch. This is a hot cup of joe. By doing that, it's it's like aerating the the hot fluid. It's shaking it around, it's vibrating it, it's like and you're just you're just slurping it through a tiny little sliver in between your lips. All right, and it's cooling it down. That's the point of slurping is to cool the hot liquid down, okay? All these fucking uh, maniacs are just burning their mouth, okay? If you you look at like Asian cultures, they love their soups and fuzz and all that other noodly stuff with hot liquid. They all slurp. Why? Because it fucking cools it down. I love the word fuck. I'm sorry. I'll try to say it less because some people find it obnoxious and I can understand why, but I'll try to say this. But the, 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 the slurping is okay, people. It's okay to slurp. It's okay to slurp. It's also not okay to hunch. Keep that back straight and that fucking chin high. I said fuck again. <clears throat> Sometimes I feel like I say fuck because I'm not funny enough. So I throw the word fuck in there yep. to compensate for my lack of funniness. But that's just... Yeah. Ugh, now I got the hiccups. <laughs> but that's just me old nig nog can't say that that's my old brain compensating for uh my lack of self-esteem i'm just gonna flick these buttons here because i feel like it and it feels nice it's like a fidget spinner welcome to the adhd podcast ladies and gentlemen thank you for being here it's okay to slurp your soup please slurp your soup slurp your soup slurp your soup Slurp your soup. Slurp your soup. Come on, everybody. Slurp and slurp your soup. Come on, everybody. And slurp, slurp your soup. I want to get a beat machine in here. Just put it like right here and then. Now I can fucking fuck around for a bit when I'm in a lull. This is actually my second uh, take of this podcast. The first take was uh, stale. Stale. I did about a good 15 minutes, and then I was like, nope, we're starting over. And you know what? I'm happy with the way this one came out. I really am. You can feel it. And honestly, I really feel like I'm back in the groove of things, like, right now, immediately. It's as if I left off exactly where I was before that episode 188. I don't know if this is 189 or 188. I think it's 189. Oh, actually, it might be 188. Actually, I can just fucking look right now. This might be 180. This might be episode 188. Let me take a look. Let me play some uh, hold music while you wait. Whoops. Hold on. Whoops. Nope. That's not. That's not it. <laughs> Okay, this I need a better stream deck. Here we go. Oh, no, that's not fuck me. Okay, forget about it. <laughs> forget about it. I'm not This is too much. Okay, shh. Don't don't. Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. What episode is this? 187. So it is 188. Ah, that's why. So I have the cards here. I have the cards for episode 188. But I never did get around to filming this episode. Wow. Whoops. So this is 188. One sec, I dropped a card. So let's see what I had. Let's see what I had on here <laughs> for this episode that was supposed to be filmed one year ago. Ethan Klein is pissing me off. Still is. I'll talk about that. Historical photos, have none. Papa Segura, what is that? Oh, I don't know. Is that when Segura's dad died? I don't know. Dust sucks. Yes, it does. There's dust all over the place, and I hate it. Why does it exist? 
you suck. <laughs> it says dust sucks, and then it says you suck, referring to myself. And then it says winter gives you the blues. Yes, it does. Um, Ethan, let me just talk about Ethan Klein for a second because he, oh, I don't want to look at this kid. Oh my God. We'll talk about him in a second. <sighs> Ethan Klein. You know, I love him. You know, I love H3. Always have, just like YouTube, always loved it since the dawn of its inception. But fuck me, is he pissing me off? As a lot of people. A lot of people have accepted it and still like him. And I still like him. I still like H3. It's hard for me to step away from that. But he's really gone. He's gone to the dark side. He's in the matrix, as Andrew Tate would say. He's been sucked in. <sighs> and it sucks. Because I want to watch the H3 podcast, but I can't. Because why? Because it drives me insane, brother. It drives me insane. Okay, let's watch some videos. So this opening clip that I showed y'all here is absolutely fucking terrifying. Okay, but it's it's suitable because we are in October. And October means scary stuff. Ooh, spooky. So this kid killed his mother with a sledgehammer. And Dr. Phil was like, let me interview him. Okay. Um, now, we're not going to pay attention to the interview. What I want to pay attention to is this possessed motherfucker. Okay. Firstly, let's just listen to this opening little segment here. Just listen. Did you kill your mother? Me, me, yeah. You killed your mother. Uh, and why did you I kill her? I hate this. She uh, wasn't taking care of my family. Oh, God. Okay. Whoa. Okay. I just... The scene... This, little, this clip opens with Dr. Phil saying... What did he say? What does he say exactly? Did you kill your mother? Okay. And he says, yes, I did. I'm just going to turn it up a bit. I don't know if it's going to turn up for you, but it probably will. Turn up your speakers and listen to what he mumbles under his voice before he says yes. Okay? Just pay attention to what he says. Just listen. Did you kill your mother? Me, me, yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so creepy, dude. Okay. If you listen carefully, he mumbles under his breath. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Okay? It's as if this guy's fucking possessed. And the real him is inside. You know, like screaming, trying to speak and be like, it wasn't me, it wasn't me. But the fucking crazy demonic being that has possessed him takes over his vo Like, just listen to it. You can hear him say, it wasn't me. Listen. Did you kill your mother? Me, me. Oh, do you hear it? He says, let me play it one more time. He says it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Listen. Did you kill your mother? Me, me, yeah. Oh, because you, when you first watch this, you're like, oh, he's just like, M -m -m yeah, like he's just mumbling. But look at his face. Look at the way the, listen to the guy, the way he talks. Look at the way he nods. He nods like this. Like, that's not a normal fucking human being. I don't believe in possession and shit. But if anyone's possessed, it's this motherfucker. We're going to watch it from the start again and just pay attention to what he says, how he says it, and the fucking motion of his head nodding. Like, if this guy's not possessed, I don't know. Did you kill your mother? Me, me, yeah. You killed your mother. Oh my god. And why did you kill her? 
she uh, wasn't taking care of my family. Meaning you and your brother? Yeah. Is that who you mean? Look at that. And so because she wasn't taking care of you and your family, you decided to kill her. Who nods like that? Like, that's fucking insane, dude. Did you think about discussing it with her instead of killing her? I didn't think it wouldn't do anything. And the, and the, the way... You thought it won't do any good to talk to her, so I'll just kill anything. her. When did you Possessed. decide to kill you? Possessed. I just had to show that because everyone's in the comments like, this guy's a fucking maniac and all this stuff. And he is. He is crazy. He's He's psychotic, but... And I'm not empathizing with him at all. I'm just saying I feel like the real him is still in this body and he's trapped. And whatever fucking demonic spirit is around and inside of him is taking control of him. All right now, I'm not saying that's true or I believe in that, but it, it just... Does it not seem that way? One more time, let's listen to it. He says, it wasn't me. Listen, I'm not going to go full. Did story. you kill your mother? Me, me, yeah. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. One more time. <laughs> Did you kill your mother? Me, me, yeah. Oh my God, dude. It's so distinctly it. And it gives me the chills. It gives me the spooks. You want to spook your grandmother, show her this and explain to her what I just explained to you, okay? She'll bring out her cross and some holy water and dump it on your computer. Ruff, ruff. Puppy. <laughs> you can't hear the puppy, but I sure can. There's a dog barking. Okay, I gotta, I gotta, I'm just gonna close this guy because he is giving me the heebie-jeebies. The heebie-jeebies. Come in my way. How long have we been going for? I don't even know. There's no way for me to tell. I'm using Logic Pro to record my audio. And does it have a time? Beats in time. Oh, fuck. We've been going for one hour and 39 minutes already. Jesus Christ, we better fucking wrap it up. Is that true? Holy shit. Okay, let's end with some videos. Jesus Christ, it sure didn't feel like that. Okay, let's just end. What do we got here? That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. That doesn't... Okay, let's let's end with the Liver King. Okay? Now, the Liver King... You know the Liver King. We all know the Liver King. Okay? Everyone knows the Liver King. He got pulled over. You may have seen... Now, he might be a little bit liver drunk. Um, it certainly seems that way. But let's see how he reacts to being pulled over. You from this area? I live right down the street. Oh, okay. And that's what I said. I said, I'm your neighbor. I get it if I'm some guy down here. But I'm like, I'm your best customer. You got your ID on you? Yeah. You can see yeah. I live right down the street. That's, <laughs> the old the that's, that's my predecessor. <laughs> that's my predecessor, I... I, I got oh. rid of that guy. Oliver, shut I'm up. The Liver King now. His Who predecessor. Yeah, you got it. You from this area? I live. I'll give him props. I'll give him props for the commitment of actually being the Liver King. The guy never wears a shirt, and he never will. And that's fine. That's who he wants to be. Okay, and he's got this stupid hat on. I love the hat, but. What are you going to do? You're going to wear it in your fucking Hummer while you're driving around Los Angeles? Or no, he's in Texas. That's right. He's in Texas. Of course he's in Texas. But come on. All right, you watch this. You might be like, ah, he's a little liver drunk. Um, but it's the next clip. The next clip. That really solidifies it. Whoops. I hate TikTok and I'm going to stop watching it forever. Yeah, so what's happening is... Bruce from Loves called the cops on us 
and one cop wasn't enough, and I said, more! Okay. And so they, th they sent three of them, because they knew that like one wouldn't be enough. Idea to bring more so they cops. sent three to come hang out with a liver king, and then they tried to box oh, yeah. me in. Okay. But, but you can't box me in. I'm in an H1 Hummer, so we're going to have a little fun. This is um, Ancestral Tenant 9 Bond. Yeah. We're connecting with some of the incredible law enforcement people out here. Yeah. How much you want to bet we all leave here with a smile? Liver King. Out. Oh. <laughs> I bet you left there with a ticket and maybe a jail sentence and a DUI. Because there's this was uploaded eight hours ago. We haven't seen anything since. Um, now, to me, he looks a little intoxicated. And according to the comments here, let's take a look. Bro is plastered. Prison king. It's been two hours, bro. Definitely got arrested. See? Primarily wasted. Jail is a is pretty primal. No cop can hold back the liver king. And that's not, the guy's like, liver, liver's like, oh, one cop wasn't enough, so I requested more. No. No, you didn't. Look, look, look. He's, he's, he's looking at himself and he's like, I'm so fucking muscular and buff that they needed to bring in some extra cops. Maybe they did. Maybe they didn't. Who knows? But I want to stay updated on the king of liver. I like the liver king. I don't care what you say or think. I like the liver king. I like him. I think what he's doing is awesome. I actually bought some liver and I want to eat it raw because I, I, I agree with a lot of what he says. I really do. And I don't care what the fuck you think. I really don't give a shit. Now, I was going to talk about the Try Guys and that hunk of horse shit. But maybe we'll leave that for next episode. Uh, yeah, I just want to say it's glad to be back. And I'm not going to get too cheesy or, or, or sentimental with you guys because, what am I saying? There is no you guys. It's just me. And eventually there will be other people, but it, it truly feels good to be back. And I can't believe I just went on for an hour and 44 minutes without even really getting into everything that I want to. That means it's a productive episode, ladies and gentlemen. Ah, so how does the outro go? That's it for this episode of the Dynamite Gizmo Podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Please like, comment, subscribe, do all that bullshit that I'm never going to say again because I think it's baloney. And if you like it, you're going to do that stuff anyway. So that is the last time you're ever going to hear me say that. Goodbye, everyone. Bye. Bye.